Hello, charcoals and cinders. My name is TV Sky, and uh, what's the deal with Brand? Brand is a little bit of an awkward fit for a what's the deal video, because usually what we do in these videos is we take a look at the character's lore and the color story and like all of the story content that's associated with them. Then we compare that to their character design. And we talk about the interplay between the two, how well one reflects the other and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But the trouble with Brand is that he doesn't really have a lot of lore and the lore he has might not be canon. Similarly, he doesn't really have that much character design going on. There really isn't that much to talk about when it comes to this guy. So why do a video on him anyway? Well, because that that lack of anything to talk about actually made me a little bit interested because it gives me an opportunity to do something I don't usually spend a ton of time doing in these videos, and that is to offer constructive criticism in the sense of I'm going to imagine a way to make Brand a better, more interesting character, both in terms of character design and in terms of the lore and story aspects. So we're not going to spend that much time covering the stuff that Riot has already put out for him, but we are going to spend some time discussing what a character design like Brand could be with a few changes and tweaks and updates and what kinds of stories you could tell about him. So. We're going to start with Brand's lore, and the thing about Brand's lore, like I said, is that there really isn't that much of it. This right here, that's it. There's, there's, not, there's nothing when you scroll, it's just this. It's two paragraphs of text laying out sort of the basics of the story that he used to have. And the way it goes is this. In a faraway place known as Loch Far, there was a seafaring marauder called Keegan Road, and he's a pirate or a raider of some sort, and Lockfar, by the way, is in the Freljord. It's a peninsula on the Freljordian area of the continent, or at least it used to be. It's not 100% clear if it's still canon, but it probably is because it was, I think, mentioned in Shadow and Fortune back in the day. Anyway, he's a raider, he's a pirate, he does steely stuff and some bad things and some good things, he has a crew. One day he comes across this magical cave while out sailing on the Arctic seas. Inside, there is a flame trapped inside a cage of ice, which seems like a thing that shouldn't be possible. Keegan Road reaches out to touch it and then he's possessed. He becomes Brand, that, that fiery spirit that was trapped in the ice cage was Brand, now it takes over his body. It's kind of a Darken-ish, same sort of thing that's going on there, except without the living weapon, and no, I'm not going to indulge in some kind of theory that Brand is a Darken. <clears throat> there really isn't much to him. All we know about Brand from this is that it is a creature of the olden times, perhaps even a casualty of the Rune Wars. It is known in ancient texts as the Burning Vengeance. It is a creature of pure, fiery hate. Oh, I messed that up a little bit. That exists for no other reason than to lay waste to the world of men and yordles. No one is quite sure how Bran found his way to Valoran, but he began his predations at once. In the lore pre-2014, pre the retcon, when the League of Legends was still a thing in League of Legends lore, there's a little bit more to this lore. After this, he began his predations at once. There's a little bit of story about how he gets taken down by the Demacians, who then hand him over to the Institute of War, who give him the opportunity to either be trapped forever or fight in the League of Legends. He also has a little bit of extra lore content. He has a League Judgment, which was an extra piece of lore that used to be released alongside Champions, sort of detailing his encounter with Garen and Lux, who are two of the mages who help take him down, and how they hand him over to a summoner, and how his thought process kind of works as he con contemplates whether to fight in the League of Legends or whether to be trapped forever. There isn't much to it. There really isn't much insight into who he is or how he thinks particularly, except that it reveals a sort of single-minded fixation with just destroying and burning everything because of some reasons. Now, the trouble with um, the piece of lore here that we've just talked about is that it might not be canon. And the reason I say that is because in the Shurima lore update that happened uh, back when Azir was released, I think, yeah, when Azir was released, Renekton, Nasus, and Seraph had their lores updated, and in the plot of the whole Emperor Azir story, 
Serath is planning a rebellion against Asir. In order to pull that off, he has to distract the protectors, Renekton and Nasus. They, they can't be present because then maybe his attempt to take over power won't work. So he weakens uh, the seals on a magical sarcophagus that contains a magical being of fire. Or as it's said in one of the other stories, um, a magical sarcophagus containing a beast of living fire. And the general consensus in the community seems to be that that was supposed to be an allusion to Brand. Like, Serath unleashes Brand on the world, and Brand, because he's a champion, he has champion power levels, cannot be dealt with by anything except other champion level creatures, i.e. Renekton and Nasus. Is that the case? I thought it was confirmed for sure uh, that Brand is the creature that's being talked about in this story, but actually looking back and googling around a bit, I couldn't actually found any, find uh, any official confirmation that this was so. So it's a little bit up in the air, like, did Zerath just unleash a random magical fire creature? Or was he unleashing the one magical fire creature that we already know about? Not sure. So whether Brand's lore is even canon or not is a little bit up in the air. But if it isn't, it's not like there's a lot to lose. So, Bran's old lore, assuming all this stuff here is canon, is kind of boring. <laughs> there, there really, there's really very, very little to it. Um, the whole thing of introducing a guy called Keegan Road, who was a Freljor dude, something, something, gets possessed by an evil spirit, doesn't do anything. Like, it really doesn't have any effect on him, and it, it doesn't, it, all it really does is explain why he looks human. That's it. That's, that's literally all that does. Like, the whole connection to the Freljord and the whole thing about he was a pirate and a raider and stuff, none of that comes up with the rest of who Brand is. And as for Brand itself, the creature, it is a creature of pure fiery hate that exists for no other reason than to lay waste to the world of men and yordles. Like everybody else, he hates yordles. But, like, in, in terms of giving a motivation or a personality or some kind of cause or a reason to Brand, that's it. Like, he, he hates everything and he wants to burn it. Blah, blah, blah. That's it. That's all we get. And consequently, I, what kind of story do you tell about Brand? Like, how, how do you make an engage, engaging narrative about him at all? He has no motivations. Like, he did, there's nothing he wants. He doesn't have a quest. He doesn't have a backstory. He doesn't have a theme to him. He just wants to burn things. And burn and burn. So the only thing you can really do with this version of Brand is make him a villain in someone else's story. That's that's really pretty much about it. He can be a villain, he can be a stand-in for a natural disaster, but in terms of personal agency, in terms of progressing a story for himself, they really... No, like the only thing you could really do was maybe say, oh, Keegan Road was possessed, but his consciousness is coming back and he's trying to rest for control over Brand, the creature, or something like that, then maybe you could build some kind of dynamic between Brand and Keegan Road. But there's no, like, again, in the lore that's present and in the lore that used to be present, there's really no indication that the sentience of Keegan Road exists anymore. Like, it's just his body and the creature Brand now possesses it. So yeah, really, there's not much to say about Brand's lore, although I just spent about eight minutes saying stuff about Brand's lore. And similarly, there's not that much to say about his character design either. Like, he's just a bald dude who's on fire and his skin is made of coal. That... That's about it. There is one thing, though. This. This right here. Not his crotch. I know some of you are thinking. Not his crotch. His pants. Brand is wearing pants. And insofar as I can tell when I zoom in, there's supposed to be some sort of linen or cloth or something. Like, there, there's supposed to be some kind of organic material. And you kind of immediately run into a, tr a, a troubling challenge to the suspension of disbelief in that a creature that's made of fire is wearing flammable clothing. That... How, how is that supposed to work? And of course, the reason why he's doing that is the same reason that the Hulk always mysteriously manages to be wearing purple shorts. Because you can't just have him running around with his ding a ding dong flipping around everywhere. That would be bad, and it would get the game rated mature, and Riot certainly do not want that. We'd also get it banned in a number of countries. 
So the reason Bran is wearing pants is because if he wasn't wearing pants, someone would ask the question, hey, is that a naked man? Even though charcoal burning on fire, the nakedness really shouldn't be an issue, but people would remark on it, therefore he's wearing pants. And they do try to do something with it, with these leather straps that he's got going on around his legs. They, they're kind of pointless, like they don't really do anything, but the thing they're supposed to indicate, the thing that having leather straps tied around him is supposed to tell the audience is, okay, he was restrained. There's some sort of straitjacket business going on here. And the thing about having the pants legs torn and only wearing the pants and not the shirt is to say, oh, he's broken free of his restraints. Like, that's the visual language that the character design is trying to get across, is that he's a creature who has broken free of restraints. But it, again, it's like, he's made of fire. So how the hell is he wearing... How is he wearing leather belts? Like, leather burns. Eventually, if you set fire to it long enough, it does burn. Or at the very least, it dries out so much that it becomes brittle and breaks. Like, it's... So the pants are kind of necessary for reasons of society, but they're also kind of stupid and dumb. But beyond that, there really isn't... I mean, what do you say about Brand? He's, he's got coal for skin and he's on fire. He's bald. And he's got some little patterns and stuff of fire going on on him, but there really isn't much to his character design. So um, what could we do with a character like Brand? With a basic concept like ancient vengeful fire demon possessing a human corpse. What could you do with that? Well, I think the general concept of Brand is actually quite a good one because the thing Brand looks like is that he's kind of burning up from the inside, right? It looks like there's fire inside him that's kind of just spilling out of him everywhere. And the thing I would do is actually go a lot harder on that, actually just dial it up. A hell of a lot just instead of because right now brand is very recognizably human he's entirely intact right there's, there's just, he has a full human body he's got lovely abs i think he's got an eight pack actually and he's got you know lovely biceps triceps muscles he's really fit he looks very handsome if he wasn't made of coal and on fire so what i would do is say okay so what we have here is a malevolent fire demon possessing a human corpse. So instead of having him be sort of this perfect specimen, muscular, slender human with a lovely arched back and stuff, why don't we make it more of a plague? Like, visualize it more in terms of a disease, and thus, instead of having Brand be all of this, be fucking shredded, make him bulbous, and kind of there's pustules of fire, little, like, Postules of lava just glowing on his skin and bursting into flame every once in a while that he's he's kind of bloated and kind of just misshapen and deformed because he's full of all this raging power that's just kind of twisting his body every which way and tearing him apart a little bit and maybe even have like have the middle section of his arm just kind of ripped out just like torn apart ligaments just floating in the air but then held together by a stream of fire that's still connecting you know the rest of the arm to the rest of the body and sort of so that it's very clear that this is a body that's just kind of barely containing whatever it is that's possessing it this is a body that's falling apart under the strain it's only being held together by the magical power of the creature that has possessed him instead of giving him this very well-formed face, really, have a mouth that's just kind of torn open by flames, with flames spilling out of holes in his cheeks and his eyes, like one of the eye sockets is just all burned out, like there's this big gaping hole in his head, while the other one looks more normal, and his nose is gone, and his ears are just kind of gone as well, and just play a lot more with what would you get if you had someone who was permanently on fire, but could never actually burn up. And for that, I would also up the fire effects a lot more. I would really, I would like almost Super Saiyan aura style, just have him just enveloped in flames at all times so that what you see is not so much a human figure that's spewing fire, but a human figure that's constantly enveloped in fire, consumed by fire, and where you kind of, instead of seeing clearly the form inside, you get a glimpse of the form inside when he moves, when you get the flames kind of move out of the way a little bit, and you kind of get to see the horror show that's going on inside this burning pyre. And in terms of game readability, like, part of the reason why Brand isn't just a fire spirit is because in-game, 
having a human form run around is probably a lot easier in terms of in terms of game design, in terms of making it obvious to an opponent exactly what direction the character is facing, what they're doing. It's a lot easier to have an actual physical form um, in terms of communicating game design. So you probably couldn't go like all the way and just having be a walking bonfire, but I would like to see a lot more like just erratic shooting flames just enveloping him in terms of think of um sun flares like if, if you ever see rendered images of the sun like what you'll usually see is this boiling inferno that where you you get sun flares just kind of shooting up these grand curves of fire billowing over the surface of the planet that kind of thing i would like to see i would like to see that kind of thing going on more with him to give this sensation of uncontrollable elemental power barely coalesced into a single form that's what I would like to see with the character design. And I think in terms of making an interesting and unique character design, that's a much better and and something I've seen a lot less than this version. Because this version is, is when we portray elementals, elemental characters, no matter where you see it, usually it's never portrayed as abjectly horrifying. Like you get an earth golem, and it, it's this big raw amount of rock. You get something like the thing from Fantastic Four where they, yeah, yeah but they look cool. They're, they're earth elementals, but they never look like horrifying abominations. The same thing with air elementals, the same thing with water elementals, the same thing with fire elementals. They're often inhuman and weird, but they never look abjectly horrifying. Like, they never look completely alien to us. They never look completely terrifying. They never look completely foreign. They look like... What if you were to ask someone to draw what water would look like as a person and they were a Disney animator? No, oh, that's very nice and pretty. Like. We always humanize them, we always anthropomorphize them a lot. So it would be interesting to go the other direction and say, okay, so what do you get when you take something that is decidedly not human and just kind of cram it into a human form? What does that do to a human body? That, to me, would be a lot more interesting. And in terms of the lore, in terms of the stories that you can tell about a creature like Brand, I would give him more of a personality. I would, I would associate him more with... The kinds of things, the kind of themes and personality traits that we usually associate with fire when it comes to our culture. Uh, in Norse mythology, there's a story where the gods arrive at the home of one of the kings of the giants. And they engage in various competitions with the giants. It's just a form of friendly competition. And Loki himself enters into an eating contest with an opponent. And there's a huge trough of food laid out in front of them and Loki eats and eats and eats and eats and he's a fantastic master champion eater but when he gets to the end finishing at the same time as his opponent his opponent has eaten not only the food in the trough but the trough itself and the trick of course revealed to them later is that Loki's opponent was fire itself and fire is a glutton it consumes everything it eats everything there's an interesting idea what if Brand's fundamental personality trait wasn't so much I want to destroy everything as it was I want to consume everything. I want to eat it. Right? He, he's a fire. He uses fuel. So why not make him want to eat everything? And sort of make that the entry point to his personality that he's this massive hedonistic glutton who's also a complete psychopath who doesn't care that he's causing human misery and pain because he just wants to eat, but otherwise he has this very lovely, charming, warm personality, except he likes to eat things, including people, for fuel for his fire. There's an angle you could take on it. Or alternatively, if he is to be a Shuriman champion, if he is to be updated to fit in the Shuriman canon, the obvious place to go would be the Jinn. And for the Jinn, uh, we're talking... Well, in the West, we might call genies, um, but like the Arabic conception of the fire spirit that lives in the desert, and then which, you know, like in some versions, might grant wishes, but in other versions, is decidedly more capricious and malevolent and dangerous uh, as as that mythical creature. Unfortunately, I'm not super up on my jinn lore, so exactly what kind? Of, that's D J I N N, not jinn, as in Kada Jinn, the sniper dude with the mask and the soft-spoken voice. I'm talking like ancient fire spirit roaming the deserts with its own agendas, with its own memories of grand empires past, because that's when you could have a fire spirit who was once a servant to the great emperors of Shirima in the past, who can talk at length with Nasus about the history of Shirima, but who has a decidedly different 
approach where, like, where Nasus looks at Shirima with all just kind of, oh, perhaps Shirima was meant to fall. Like sort of this dejected, tragic longing for a glorious empire that was passed. What kind of perspective would an, would an immortal fire spirit have on the whole thing? Like how, do, how does he see it? How does a djinn look at an empire like Shirima? And there is an option for the personality. And there's lots of other concepts of what fire is, like what kinds of personality traits it's associated with, what kinds of things fire is supposed to do that you could enter into. Like fire to a person living north of the Ar Arctic Circle is a very different thing than, than what fire is to someone who lives on the equator or in a desert. They, they have very different personality traits associated with them, very different mythologies. And digging into some of those to give him personality would be to me, very interesting, especially if you reach into cultures like, for instance, um, African cultures. What kinds of relationships do they have to fire? What kind of gods do they associate with it and draw from that? Because Africa is one of the areas of inspiration that League of Legends could stand to draw a lot more from. Or South America or you know, Southeast Asia or Aboriginal culture, even. There's all kinds of places where you can draw inspiration for it. But yeah, I mean, I think that's about... Yeah, 20 minutes should be enough just rampant speculation, but to TLDR, Brand right now has no lore, really. And he doesn't really have a personality. There's very little interesting about him, and his character design doesn't really say anything about him or his relationship to fire. He's just a charcoal dude who burns stuff. There's a lot of opportunities for how you could make that better. You could change what the fire does to the body, how the elemental power is expressed. You could make it horrifying rather than cool looking. You could make it alien and foreign rather than, you know, relatable and kind of cool. You can tell stories where he has a personality that's drawn from other ideas than just the destructive power of fire, but something like the gluttony of fire or just the, the fiery temper of fire, like something else than just he wants to burn things because he wants to burn things. That must be enough. Anyway, my name has been TV's Guy, and thank you very much for watching this little slightly different version of a What's the Deal video. If you liked it, is you subscribe. There's, there's a button for subscribing, and there's also a like button uh, that you can click on. And if you are so inclined, I do have a Patreon where you can contribute whatever. Like, any amount per month helps me out tremendously uh, with rent and food and stuff. So if you want to do that, that's great. And there's rewards and stuff. You can see that on the Patreon. It's going to be a link on screen, going to be a link down below. You can do that. There's also a dislike button uh, that you can click if you want to, but there's a non-zero chance that you will be possessed by an ancient evil entity that will turn you into a character with no discernible personality whatsoever, who's wearing pants, even though they really don't have any reason to. Thank you very much for watching.